Okay, this question is, how does someone, uh, or from Sherlock, this is from Sherlock YZ. The question is, how does someone learn to be a better coach? Um, I would actually watch, the number one way is to watch the movie Ted La or watch the series Ted Lasso. That would be my step one. I would, I would watch any videos from Simon Sinek. That's Simon, S-I-M-O-N space S-I-N-E-K, Simon Sinek. Watch any videos with him. Um, just in terms of, just in terms of, uh, of, of the way you run a practice, if your players have, are, are technically competent, as in they understand, they have a, they have a fundamental, like I have no idea where your players are in terms of like, if they're at the, the place, they're at the stage where they just swarm the, swarm the ball, swarm the ball, like there's a cluster of players on the ball, if they're still at that stage, and they don't understand like passing and shooting, I would I would teach them, uh, have them start to learn um, ball mastery. Then my right. So if if you have untechnical players, then my practice sessions would be split up into four four things every day, and they would be ball skills mastery. Okay, you do warm up, five to ten minutes of warm up. Ball skills mastery, so you could do cover, cover skills, um, cover skills or dribbling sequences. Step two or part two would be um, um, uh, barrel game, the barrel game, and all that is is. You get a garbage can and you have all the players stand around the garbage can three three or four yards out from the garbage can with a ball in their hands and they're practicing they get a bounce and they're practicing juggling the ball into the barrel that's and you i've done this with my uh, seventh grade players seventh and eighth grade players and sixth grade i think they're six seven and eight you have them all stand around the barrel i had like 20 players all juggling at the same barrel this is going to improve their ability to um, to juggle a ball while moving forward on the field, and this is going to translate into becoming becoming better players. And then I would finish with one v one. You need a, you need some tall cones to do this, and if you have no cones, you could have them stop the ball on on. You have to designate designate areas where they stop the ball, but it's basically one v one with ideally small balls, and they're trying to knock over their opponent's their opponent's cone, right? So you you space two cones a little bit apart from from each other, a couple yards apart, depending on how old these players are, and they're getting a lot of touches, and they're playing one v one and trying to knock each other's cone over. Best of three, best of five. That's my structure of practicing about untechnical players. If you have technical players, the way I would structure my practice is warm up, possession, any type of possession, whether it's three team possession, uh, two team possession, you could do possession through to score a point. You you get you have to put um, the ball through gates. You put get different gates on the field, and um, that's how they score points in possession and. But you know, first team to three or first team to five, um, and ideally, whenever you have possession, you want the area to be smaller, and s because it forces fast, fast ball movement and decision making, simple decision making. Um, so right, warm up, warm up possession, then finishing on goal, then crossing and finishing, and finish with three different teams playing towards big goals right bring bring two full-size soccer goals in very close very close to a point where that if a player loses the ball against the other team right you want to split your team up into three so if you've got 18 players you ideally you want to split the team up into three 
and the city, the losing team always stays on the on the outside as bumper players that keeps them engaged in the game and that keeps them uh, focused, right? Because they want to get back on the field. So when they're bumper players, they're making good passes and um, because they want to play. So that's going to... And having the three teams encourages competitiveness, which raises the enjoyment and fun level. You make it competitive, they're going to have more fun, in theory. Um, so that's what I would do, right? So one more time, it's for technical players. If you've got a technical team, my practice looks like warm-up, possession, finish on goal, crossing and finishing, then playing to big goals without any restrictions. Let them play. And you don't earn playing. Playing is, is you need play in your life. Doesn't matter if it's soccer. You gotta have fun. You gotta play, and you wanna cut the, you wanna cut play a little bit short. Especially, you wanna have a lot of fun playing, but you wanna keep it tight so that they're hungry for more soccer, and you know you don't wanna burn them from from both ends of the candle. You wanna have them to just enough play to really get a good to finish the practice on a high note with great energy so they can't wait to get back to the next practice. Um, so th that would be my part two of become a good coach, right? So that's what my practice routine would look like. Um, three, you just, even if you didn't, even if you did none of those things, if you can, if you can be very encouraging and enthusiastic and and reward simple you want to be a leader of people and players so you, you want to treat your players with respect but you want to be more excited about practices and games than they are if you bring energy more energy so if a player hits a nice takes a nice shot or your players string up beautiful passes together or have great movement you want to encourage great soccer simple soccer elegant and simple movement and simple finishing right encourage good play and th that will encourage your players to play good um i think at the core the way to be a good coach i would read t uh, 12 rules for life jordan peterson uh that'll t help right sometimes you gotta have you know you deal with a spectrum of parents and players at all levels, right? From friggin' seventh, you deal with character, different character traits, different players, mentalities, parents, other coaches, right? The, the game of soccer is in a bubble, but it's, it's so much larger than that. So this is going to teach you some principles that are going to help you navigate things that are bigger than just a game. So... Um, and one of those things is, right, one of the principles from the book is tell the truth um, or at least don't lie, right? So if, a, if you have to have tough conversations with parents or players or yourself or referees, right, and it, think, it gives you a, a framework for operating on and off the field that people can as aspire to be. So you, you want to be an ambassador of the race and just treat yourself, treat yourself right treat your players right but you know a lot of people treat their animals and others better than they do themselves you got to put your own oxygen mask on first you want to treat yourself like the person you want to care for right treat yourself with the most respect and care and that'll you know that'll spread to the world so uh yeah i hope i hope some of those um i hope some of those ideas help uh, reach out, reach out with any questions and thanks for your time. Okay. Yeah.